So everyone who collects miniatures more often than once a year for that nerdy child you have and you aren't sure who's ever gonna have friends is aware that Games Workshop is king shit when it comes to people buying their stuff. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves, the company shits the bed as often as it doesn't, but saying their products don't sell well is just denying reality. But did you know that there are other options for you to collect miniatures from? And some of them even have their own war games attached- HOLY SHIT WOW! Now I figured that, hey, I made a video about collecting Warhammer, but really the ways I said to go about it in that video can be used for any brand of minis. Warhammer just happened to be the one I have wet dreams about. So today, we're gonna take a look at what some of the other war games have to offer in terms of miniatures. We'll mostly look at the general quality and price of the minis, though I'll touch upon some other aspects as they come up. I want to be clear right now, however, I won't be reviewing the war games the minis are for. I don't have any close friends to play Warhammer with, let alone the war games that don't have dedicated stores for them 10 minutes from my house. So I'm afraid for that you'll have to go elsewhere. I'm I'm just here to go over some options for burning your money on plastic. With that being said, let's get started. To start us off, let's jump away from the fantasy and sci-fi stuff and break into some new grounds. Flames of War by Battle for Miniatures is a World War II miniatures war game. So not really new grounds as it is probably the only real life thing that people who play war games are knowledgeable about. And if you think that's an insult towards you, I majored in history so know that I'm in the same boat. Anyways, as far as the quality of the minis go, it's pretty good. I don't think I would say it's amazing or anything, but it's definitely quality work. The minis look good if a little samey, but on the other hand, they're based off of real-life militaries and the armed forces generally have the uniforms looking the same. So if you're going to be collecting based on real-life armies, you're probably going for uniformity. Personally, I think the vehicles look the best, but that's just me. I think the biggest problem you'll be running into is if you want your minis to be fitting a role-playing game, you're going to be hard-pressed to use these guys. Space Marines and Cadians can work with minimal suspension of disbelief in just about every sci-fi setting, and the same can be said of Sig Marines and especially old fantasy miniatures. But Soviet Russians? Look man, all I'm saying is I don't remember Zhukov invading Eberron. Maybe I skipped that chapter in the textbook or missed that Sabaton song. They're also 15 millimeters, so a little on the smaller side, though whether or not that's a positive or a negative is up to you. Personally, I can see it both ways. But you know what these glorious bastards really excel at? Pricing. Since Imperial Guards are just ripped off from real life tanks anyway, let's look at a Lehman Russ for comparison. $59 American. The price of a AAA video game in other words. Now let's look at what that amount of money buys you in Flames of War and holy shit, you get 5 tanks for that? You know what, I'm, I'm sure that's just a fluke. Let's see what buying infantry gets you. At Games Workshop, you can buy 10 Cadians for $45 American. Now let's look at a Falsham Jaeger company. Sorry if I butcher the pronunciation, I don't speak Blitzkrieg. $60 for 92 goddamn miniatures. I'm not looking at eBay resellers, I'm looking at the official website. I mean, what else is there to say? You get a massive amount of miniatures for almost no money. If you just want to play a war game and don't care what it's about, I think I can recommend Flames of War over anything else on the cost alone. Quality minis, quality prices, I mean, hell, what's not to like? Alright, up next is Kings of War, entirely because I want to confuse everyone and make people think I'm still talking about Flames of War. The miniatures for these guys are incredibly original, something never before seen in the market. Clearly, nothing significantly influenced these creations. No sir, none at all. They bear the mark of true originality and- Okay, I'm done with this guy. You can tell these are bargain bin Warhammer miniatures. Though I want to be clear, I don't intend that as an insult. There are certainly some differences, but certain armies like the Skaven, pardon me, the Ratkin, are blatantly just copy and pasted from Warhammer fantasy. Though there's two reasons I consider this a positive. One is that there's still great quality minis. While the peak of Warhammer minis in terms of quality is better than the peak of Kings of War minis, they're all still fantastically designed and produced. Sure, some of them are pretty silly looking and a lot are really samey, and I mean Attack of the Clones samey in some cases, but for minis from a rank and file war game that isn't the most heinous of crimes, and either way quality is quality. Reason two is that because Warhammer fantasy is dead and gone and the old world is probably going to cost an arm and a leg for a box of ten Bretonian horsefuckers or whatever, Whatever. These are as close as you're going to get to factions like the Tomb Kings. Also, they aren't trying to be original in some of these cases. Mantic Games, the company behind them, have openly said these miniatures are compatible with other fantasy gaming systems. Which in terms of company policy is about as big a middle finger to GW I can think of without pissing on that Stormcast statue they have. I mean, for God's sakes, they allow minis from other companies in official tournaments, but I'm getting way off topic now. And some are pretty original, like the Sea Monster Army. That one's pretty sick. As for prices, well, it isn't the same level as 92 minis, for 60 that Flame of War offered, it's not far behind and it's at a 28mm scale. I mean, 160 bucks for 119 dwarf minis is a goddamn steal, even if some of them look a little derpy. Honestly, I think this goes beyond war game collecting. If you want to collect a ton of fantasy pieces for D&D or Pathfinder, this is probably the perfect point between price and quality. Highly recommended. Whether it be to recreate Warhammer Fantasy, to use the actual Kings of War system, which I hear is pretty great, or just to collect your own fantasy minis for whatever reason. Great company, great minis, buy 
my Kings of War. Next up, Battletech. One of the few games that I can tell rivals Warhammer in popularity and lore in terms of its depth. But I'm not here to talk about that because Black Pants Legion exists and by god am I not up to that level of quality. Let's just talk about minis. The quality of Battletech minis is weird for me to talk about. The reason for that is because you go to the website to buy Battletech and sweet Jesus, what the fuck am I looking at? Wait, there's another website? As it turns out, a lot of different people make miniatures for Battletech. I fully admit that I could just be an idiot. I'm not too familiar with buying Battletech yet, so if I'm royally misconstruing how this works, please let me know. There just seems to be a lot of places you can buy Battletech from, which honestly is a good thing, if a little confusing for newcomers. Overall though, I'm gonna say that they're high quality, but some of them like this capsule core drop pod thing look a little strange. And this tower. I know it's just an office building, but someone determined enough could probably make it out of paper mache. Again, I want to clarify, most of these miniatures kick ass, just some I think kind of fall a bit flat. Not bad, just not as good as others, please don't send pipe bombs in my mailbox. Uh, anyway, that aside, using them might be a bit tricky in conjunction with non-Battletech games, like if you want a cool mech fight in a sci-fi RPG you're running due to their size, but that's not what they're designed for, so it's not really a problem. The smaller scale makes sense for the mech fighting game they're designed for, since no one wants to look half a dozen Wraith Knights around for a friendly game of Battletech. Just clear off your 28mm Stormtrooper and use a token for reset on the battlefield if you really want to integrate the battle mechs into your game. As for price, very low. From my understanding, Battletech games can be played with just 4 minis per side on the lower end, and even beyond that you can get most mechs for around $10. Throwing together an army of these guys is pretty cheap and they look great. They're gorgeous models and are easy on the wallet, so why not pick a few of these guys up? Kick the Kalanos out of the Inner Sphere, enlist in the Calm Guard today! And another sci-fi one, a franchise everyone on planet Earth knows about, is Star Wars Legion. I mean, it's Star Wars. Of course it was gonna get its own minis eventually. And by Darth Vader's robotic nuts do these minis not disappoint. I know Disney wouldn't let its name be so associated with anything short of technical perfection, but my god, these put every other company to shame with the details on these things. It's like they shrunk down actual clone troopers for these things. I've really nothing else to say on the matter, because I only say they look fantastic so many times. As for prices, well, it's a bit on the steeper side. 25 USD for 7 clone troopers isn't exactly cheap, but it's Disney, the second greediest company involved in the miniatures market, so it shouldn't come as a surprise. I'm reasonably sure the game itself doesn't involve too much in the way of massive scale battles, so the prices aren't as killer as you might think. But if you want larger war zones, you're going to need to shell out some money. On the plus side, Star Wars minis work fairly well if you want to use them for more general role-playing purposes. I mean, yeah, everyone's going to be thinking about how that model that you swear isn't just a battle droid is totally a battle droid, but who really cares? Last one now, because the video is getting a bit long and I need to milk this topic for cat, wrap things up for the sake of being concise, War Games Foundry Miniatures. Not the biggest of names by any means, but hear me out, there's a reason I saved them for last. First off though, quality. Eh, th they're okay. The detailing on them isn't awful, but they're certainly better out there, and a lot of the options available are the exact same miniature in a pack of 8. As for price, it's a bit steep as well. 12 to 14 pounds for on average 8 minis, which converts to roughly 25 US dollars, not including shipping. There's definitely worse prices, but also for definitely better models. So if the price is pretty high and the quality is meh, why the hell did I save these guys for last? Well, just look at the range of models and see for yourself. There is a massive amount of them to choose from, I mean, this is ridiculous. The fact that they even recognize the difference in Roman military eras amazes me, let alone the fact they have comprehensive miniature lists for each of them. Do you want some barbarians for a D&D game? The uncivilized kind, not the class? Here you go. Want something that can be used for 50 different flavors of town guard? Here you go. Want to fill up towns with civilians, march to war for Napoleon, or have knights from every period of the medieval era? Go nuts, they've got it all and more. Don't come to these guys for the quality or price. To be honest, you can probably find better stuff out there, even if what they have here isn't horrible. Come to Foundry for the sheer scope of the different kinds of miniatures you can get. For world building and set piece minis, you can do no better than here. Hopefully you'll at least consider ordering some of these minis instead of simping for that which shall not be named. There are plenty more out there I might cover in the future, but these are my personal favorites, be it because of the setting they're from, quality, price, or any number of reasons. Step out of your comfort zone a bit and give these minis a try. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. Take care out there.